Neely's Creek uh, and whoever else. And by Neely's Creek, I mean people of Neely's Creek, not Neely's Creek. I found Neely's Creek. It's there when it's been raining quite a bit. So people of Neely's Creek, it's time to pray. We have a little bit of equipment here. Um, two pieces of this equipment may be available to you in, well, wherever you are. Your home, your apartment, your trailer, your mobile home, your submarine, your airplane, your spaceship. First is the Bible. And the next is this book, Pray With Your Eyes Open. You, you might have this, actually. Then you'd be three for three. If not, I'm going to carry this part for us this evening. And then lastly would be the prayer guide. This is on the church website. There's a link to this. It will be a very helpful guide as we enter into this time of prayer together this evening. One, two, three. I'm going to begin by opening God's Word. I'm going to introduce what Dr. Pratt has put forward in his uh, book, Pray With Your Eyes Open, and then we're going to go ahead and pray. So I'm turning to Romans chapter 8, and that's a pretty powerful chapter if you're familiar with it. If you're not, go ahead and read it, and you'll recognize this as a pretty powerful chapter in a pretty powerful book. But regarding prayer, we have this in verse 28. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So we're called to pray and we are equipped to pray in part by the accompanying ministry of the Holy Spirit who is going to pray according to God's will. We're told in God's word that we do not know what to pray for as we ought, at least at times. And so this, I think, comes as a pretty good relief because if there is that much pressure, at least on me, for my prayers, and uh, that is to get them right, to make sure that the right words were prayed in the right order with the right inflection at the right time, I might be too afraid to even attempt to pray. So God comforts us by his word, letting us know that he is with us even in our prayer and that the Holy Spirit always prays according to the will of God. I take that to mean this. If Matt goes sideways in one of his prayers, if his selfish heart jumps out in front and really tries to constitute a prayer that would be against the will of God, Matt doesn't get zapped by lightning immediately or even, well, in my experience, ever. Rather, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to intercede and not allow that prayer to be answered in the way that I would have desired it to be. Not allowed even to reach the ears of God in the way that I meant for it to get there. Um, I'm protected even in my prayer, as are you, Christian. So we have this comfort. We're not alone when we pray. And that is a great comfort indeed. Now I have something else before we go to uh, the book by Dr. Pratt. And in this chapter, he is going to make a distinction between a formal prayer and freedom in prayer. And we have a spectrum there. And some people will want to be very free in their prayers, spontaneous. Others will feel more comfortable being very formal, having them written or put down beforehand using uh, prescribed prayers. For example, the book of prayer or the Lord's prayer. So the way I understand this and the way I hope to help you understand this before we read just an excerpt there is this. Uh, once upon a time, I was on a high school basketball team. It might surprise you um, if you've met me in person. I'm taller than the average bear. Probably not because some bears are very tall. Taller than the average person. They put me on the basketball team. There I was. And so we had plays, and they were very formal. The coach could put them on the blackboard. Coach could put them on the whiteboard. Coach could put them on the clipboard. Coach could walk us through them on the floor, X's and O's, very formal. He could teach them. We could learn them. We could reproduce them on paper, on the blackboard, on a clipboard, by walking them out on the floor. And that was appropriate, and that was needed. But then there was practice, and then there was game time. And there would need to be a little bit of freedom there because when the game is being played, um, the X's, which might represent our team, could be moving quite predictably, but the O's, 
we're moving with some predictability, but not much predictability. And so our forms, uh, though very effective and very accurate on paper or on the blackboard, um, needed to have a little bit of wiggle room depending on what was actually happening on the floor. And there would need to be the need at times to do something that might not have been there beforehand on the board or on the clipboard or even in practice. There needed to be a balance between form and freedom. And so it is with prayer. It's, as we already know, a very dynamic, active, engaged activity that we are undertaking when we pray and when we pray together like we are here. So let me just read a couple paragraphs to this, to this end regarding prayer. If form and freedom both have advantages and disadvantages, how are we to improve our communication in prayer? In a word, the answer is variety. And he italicizes that word, variety. Most Christians, depending on their background and present experiences, tend to think that one kind of prayer is better than the other. Unfortunately, these personal preferences can get out of hand. I have heard Christians laugh at a fellow believer's prayer because it did not measure up to the refinement of their written prayers. I have heard others mock their neighbors for reading their prayers from a book. We should avoid both of these attitudes. One of the best ways to keep our prayers vibrant and meaningful is to vary between spontaneity and formality. We need to be able to use written prayers and to write our own prayers at times, yet we also need to know the freedom of spontaneous encounter with God, never forgetting that He hears us because of His grace at work in our hearts, not because of our eloquent words as we develop the ability to approach prayer in both ways, we will find our communication with God growing in depth and wonder. Again, I find that very helpful. Um, it can be that we could be too intimidated as a basketball player to even get out on the floor because of what might happen or because of what I think I don't know. And as Christians called to pray, it might be a rather intimidating something to do if we weren't already comforted by the fact that God, in His Word, in the Psalms, has put forward multiple examples of how to pray, even at times what to pray, promising us also from the book of Romans 8.28 that His Spirit is going to be praying with us. In essence, get out there. Get into it. Get on with it. Fear not. And do not neglect to pray. We have a variety of ways that we are allowed to pray, encouraged by Scripture to pray. And thus, the last thing we want to do is not pray or be too afraid to pray. Dear me. So first was the Bible, and second was the book, and third is our prayer guide. So if you've been doing this with us online together again, I'm going to encourage you to, if you have folks around you, Take your prayer guide and split it up however you see fit and then get it prayed through. This is what we are sitting ourselves down to. This is the purpose that we are set to accomplish is to pray through these things. We expect that these are the needed somethings that need to be prayed for at this time. Some of them are ongoing. Some of them are new. At any rate, if you are by yourself, I would encourage you to get on the phone or start a video chat with somebody so that you can spend some time together praying. If you decide that you're going to do this by yourself, of course, that's fine too. You're not alone. God is with you. So I'm just going to explain how this thing works, and then I'm going to leave you to it. Okay, there's a number of sections. If I open my trifold up, I'm looking at the church staff. If I'm going top to bottom, left to right, then comes church members, then comes church, well, non-church members, friends, family, etc., and on and on. So what I would encourage you to do is to decide how you are going to split the responsibilities. There's a lot to be done here. And the more, the merrier that we can, um, what is that phrase, many hands make the work lighter. In my house, for example, we have five. And so what we'll do is we will break this thing into 10 
sections and each person gets two sections that they're responsible to pray for. And then we break off into teams of two and three and we pray through the whole thing that way. So that's an example of what can be done. But I will leave you to it. We're up to stage three here, the prayer guide. Please print yours if you haven't already and then decide how you're going to pray through it. And then let's pray through it together. Good night.